things we're going to jam about, which are all about the three phases we typically go through in the awakening to the realization we have this co-creative we have this co-creative magic with the universe regarding sculpting our lives, manifesting our lives. And one could also term this radical ownership over one's life. And I'm going to kind of take you through the phases, starting with the, the first phase where we typically all start out. And I can definitely relate to this phase. And this is when you're believing that life, that your life is a byproduct of things happening to you because your boss is this way, because your ex is this way, because you grew up poor, because your parents neglected you, because, because, because. I worked in injury rehab as a primary therapist for nine years, and I definitely saw two branches of people. It doesn't matter their culture, their background, their age, their race, their occupation, but I could, I could really divide people into two categories. One who had an internal locus of control and one that had an external locus, which means my life is like this as a result of anything out there versus my life is a result of me happening to life, right? So there was a phase in my 20s where I felt like things suck, I work too many hours, my job is like this, my ex is like this, da 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 da, I grew up like this, and it was really disempowering myself. And you can notice people like this because it seems like bad stuff is always happening to them and they're always complaining about more bad stuff happening to them. And they aren't that often talking about their own control over their life, right? And this isn't judgmental because like I said, we all start at that phase typically, but then we move into the second phase. Hey Chantel, I'm so happy you are catching this live. And then we move into the second phase. And the second phase is when we realize this way we've been doing things isn't really working for us. And we decide, hmm, I wonder if I respond differently. So the first phase was life unfolds by default based on the cards we're dealt. And it, that's just the way it is. It's the cards that I was handed. But the second phase is we realize, hmm, I wonder if it's more about the way I respond to the hand of cards I'm dealt. I wonder if my perspective on things if my belief of my own abilities and reaction to whatever the thing is actually has an influence on my life. And the more we entertain this and the more we take this level of ownership, we start realizing, oh my gosh, my life is getting better. I'm creating better experiences. Wow, this feels good. I'm on the right path. I want to keep up doing this, you know? It's, it's a much more empowering stance. And then the third phase, which is the most thrilling phase, I'm going to leave you on a bit of a cliffhanger here, it's awakening to this notion that not only is our life a reflection of how we react to the cards we're dealt, but what if we are the ones dealing the cards? <laughs> I thought of this analogy and I thought it was so powerful to actually picture it's not all written in the stars that this bad things happen and this happens and this happens and I just have to react and deal with it. But what if you are, I am the one creating the container of possibility, setting the bar with what can even happen in the first place with what um, hand of cards are even going to be delivered, right? We're really only going to be manifesting in our life to the degree our imagination will entertain is possible, you know? Who's watching? I can't tell who it is. Let me know. <laughs> Can you relate to this? And it's really cool. It's really exciting when we have this epiphany and we are like, oh my goodness, the sky isn't even the limit. And there'll be a phase where we pat ourselves on the back and we'll be like, oh, look at that manifestation. And I manifested that. And I manifested that. And you know, we're, we're in the groove. We're excited. But then it will be a hard dose of reality when something we really don't like shows up in our life and we're like, wait a minute. Okay, so if I manifested the good things, is it possible that I somehow had a part to play in the thing I don't quite love? Because here's a phrase that's really powerful to remember. All manifestations in my life are preceded by vibration and I am the only one in charge of my vibration. Boom, what a powerful statement. I have this written in an affirmation note tab on my phone to remind me of truly my co-creative power with the universe right? Hey, Amy, so happy you are here, right? So like, what a powerful mantra. All manifestations in my life are preceded by vibration and only I have the power to change my vibration. No one else does. You can allow something that happens outside of you to change your vibration, to get 
super upset, resentful, angry, lose your mind. Yeah, we all go there, but we can choose to stay there or come out of it. And coming out of it can sometimes be hard to go from really, really negative emotion to joyous elation. But there are things we can do to inch by inch move up our emotional guidance system. So sometimes we think that the feeling, the energy of anger isn't a good place to be. But the truth is it actually is a more empowered, higher frequency than that of hopelessness, despair, um, resentment, jealousy. So that's interesting to know. Oh, okay, you know what? I'm angry. How can I process this feeling of anger? Maybe I'm going to drive somewhere and do some scream therapy, you know, yell into a pillow, something like that. How, what can I do to help move myself back up and eventually get into the energy of maybe a little bit more of neutrality of the circumstance and then maybe a little bit more into empowerment and um, hopefulness and hmm, what if, and I wonder, and you know what? Now I'm kind of getting excited and oh, I can't wait actually. And you know what? I'm so grateful for this thing. And now that I come to think of it, I fucking love this part of my life. You see how like we can go from one to the next to the next and it could be over several days. In some scenarios, it could be over several weeks, but it's up to us to make the shift because at the end of the day, whether we like it or not, we actually are the ones dealing the cards, not just responding to the cards, but we're the ones dealing them. And that's the third phase of awakening. So what are your thoughts about this? Do you like this notion? Do you not like this notion? <laughs> are you like, get out of here, Christine. No, no, no. Life just is written in the stars. It's going to be shitty because I grew up this way and this person did that, right? Which, which of the two branches of people are you? Which do you identify with? I'd love to hear. And I hope you guys have a beautiful day. I'll talk to you soon. Bye.